Gregory. Anthony is a research fellow at the Independent Institute and uh, author of The Power of Habeas Corpus in America uh, and a really good friend. Anthony, it's so awesome to see you again. Hey, Kyle, it's great to see you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We need to get together. We need to, um, you know, maybe meet up in uh, Vegas for Freedom Fest or something and have a lobster roll. There's a, there's a pretty decent lobster roll place there at uh, Planet Hollywood where, uh, where the, the conference is. Really? I mean, okay. They have lobster rolls elsewhere, too. Well, hey, it's you, true, but I only you, eat lobster you, rolls in Las Vegas. Are you going to be, when, when people watch this... Are they going to see the green screen, or are you going to be, like, in front of a bunch of buildings? <laughs> I'm going to be... No, it's not... No, no. We, okay. we, we've opted okay. against the green background. We'll probably throw something up there that's interesting. Um, okay. I don't know. Maybe a blimp or something. I don't know. Like, what do you think should be back there? I just spoiled the special effect. Now they'll realize it's fake. No, nope, Nobody thinks it's real. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, I wanted to talk to you about a few things. First of all, uh, I've been perusing uh, the, um, the media and, and things. And recently, uh, former Fox Business, Freedom, uh, Fox Business host of Freedom Watch, uh, Judge Andrew Napolitano, was on The Daily Show uh, discussing the virtue of the Founding Fathers uh, declaring revolutionary war over taxes but the unnecessary nature of the American Civil War. Now, his, posi his position has kind of become a running joke on the show, and uh, I just, I wonder why. I mean, is it, should, is this a position that should be mocked? And uh, if, if it is, is it important to also make clear when we talk about Lincoln? Because Lincoln was bad. You know, you and I agree on this. You know, he was one of the worst presidents as far as his disregard for the Constitution and, and, and things like that. Uh, but if we talk about Lincoln and if we denigrate him in the public, in the public sphere, is it also important to, um, to talk about how bad the Confederacy is? Well, yeah. The Confederacy was the most, uh, in terms of, I mean, this wasn't the most important thing about it, but just in terms of you know, economic intervention, it was the most statist institution in U.S. history or American history, if you count it. Uh, it was basically full-blown war socialism. The civil liberties crackdowns were at least comparable to what was going on in the Union. And, of course, it was an a imperial slave state that was uh, interested. It was formed mainly in defense of slavery, at least in the beginning. And uh, several of the states in the Confederacy... A couple of them were over 50% slaves, and several of them were over 40% slaves. So that's, that's pretty evil. I mean, that's like, you know, if there's ever an a, a evil, unlibertarian regime from top to bottom, it was the Confederacy, and the way it waged the war was in many ways evil. I think you can be very critical of a lot of things Lincoln did, um, in trying to preserve the Union through force, in the attacks on uh, civilians, and on civil liberties violations and expansions of executive power uh, without, without soft-pedaling the Confederacy. And I think that is important. I think this question on... Um, it's kind of unfortunate because like a lot of these historical discussions that end up condensed onto TV, uh, there's a lot that's missing a lot of nuance. And so if you take a, a caricature of like a very quick and dirty populist revisionism of this civil war, it can seem pretty bad and it can seem even callous. Sure, but, sure. But uh, it's also kind of, it's, it's ahistorical to, to think of the civil war, at least in its intentions, as this like war to liberate slaves. I mean, to say that, well, the American Revolution was a war against taxes and the Civil War was a war against slavery, that's a very flawed formulation as well. And of course, the vast majority of the people killed in the Civil War weren't the slave owners uh, who would be the primary aggressors in the slave system, as well as the, the political institution protecting and enforcing it. So... I think that, I mean, I'm not a fan of the American Revolution either. Right. I, think that, I think there are aspects of it that were 
more just than the Union's war, uh, or for that matter, the, the Confederacy's war. Uh, but, but I think that the, uh, I think one mistake there is, is in praising the founders. Now, Napolitano has been very critical of the founders in other contexts, especially as it concerns slavery. I mean, he said very critical things about Washington being a slave owner. And I think it's important to, to kind of be clear that, yeah, some people, a lot of people in the American Revolution were fighting for what they saw as liberty. I think a lot of the uh, kind of everyday Americans or whatever uh, saw it as, as a, a war for liberty. But I think the political elite in, the, in this side of the Atlantic was mostly bad and unlibertarian. And uh, I tend to think that about most governing elites in most <laughs> wars. And of course, there's varying degrees of, um, of good and evil and all that. But, uh, but yeah, I think that John Stewart's formulation of it, there, it's kind of, if he, formalize, if he formulates the position he's critiquing the way he does, it sounds worse than it is. Sure. Uh, but, but it is true that I think one thing that, that I get frustrated with is if you want to talk about slavery with, uh, with, with some libertarians, they immediately start saying, oh, but the Civil War wasn't fought by the North to stop slavery, and, and they change the subject, and there's a lot of that. Now, I, I actually think it's important. Jeff Hummel uh, is one of my favorite libertarians on this subject. I like Phil Magnus, too, who's done some... Uh, important archival research, and they both have kind of this balanced approach, but also a, a libertarian approach. I think that the the uh, that it's important to separate the question of why Lincoln waged war or why the Union waged war from the question of why the Confederacy was formed and why the South seceded. Exactly. And, and I think that for the most part, if you're talking about the political leaders, especially. Uh, they both went to war for 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 less defensible reasons than their most uh, avid champions would like us to believe. Sure, you know, I mean, I really think that um, I, I I feel bad um, for Judge Napolitano. I, I think that this is just one of those situations where you get on a show like The Daily Show, and they want that gotcha moment. And with libertarians, they know that the gotcha moment is the Civil War. They just have to ask about that because there are certain ways to cut it. And, you know, it's a very nuanced position to have. And, you know, in order to understand it fully, you have to get all the nuance. Well, if you get just a soundbite, it's very easy to take that soundbite and turn it into these are people that think taxes are worse than slavery. So, you know, I, I feel bad, but, you know, I, I don't even know if it's avoidable um, unless you are able to condense a very nuanced position into a media-ready soundbite. Well, I think there are some things that... I think that there were misleading things that Stewart says, said that... Uh, and it's easier to say misleading things that are more mainstream without being uh, kind of scrutinized. I think that uh, we should take it upon ourselves to hold ourselves to as high a standard as we can. Absolutely. And even though the mainstream opinion is often cut slack that we're not, we should be all the more careful about questions of fact, certainly. And so I think that one of the big mistakes that populist kind of revisionists make is in trying to defend the Southern secession as being motivated mostly over tariffs, which I think is not true. Uh, I, I think it's kind of... The, the, the attempt to recast the war, like, oh, well, Lincoln was just trying to... Lincoln just wanted to kill hundreds of thousands of Americans because they believed in free trade. I think that's, that's not true. And, and some libertarians either say that or come close to saying that or suggest that. And I think it's important to, um, you know, I, I don't think, I think that in a, a lot of the, the biggest trouble you can get in, in being too uh, 
kicks off to the Confederacy. I mean, I don't think Napolitano did that for the most part because he was so uh, clear about how much he opposed slavery. I think that, you know, on the other hand, I hear a lot of Lincoln defenders stress the transatlantic trade, uh, slave trade, and how horrific it was, and say, well, this was worse than the war. And actually, I agree with that in terms of the overall horror. But that was, you know, most of those slaves weren't imported into what was or what eventually became the United States, you know, a small a minority of, of those. Most of the people in the United States who were in bondage, the, which was four million, I mean, that's a lot by the eve of war, were um, born into it. Uh, so, I mean, it's a, the, the thing is, I, I actually think libertarians do need to take uh, the Civil War seriously and all wars seriously and understanding how war has been the main engine of state power in, in this country, uh, especially. Uh, but I think there's also a lack of um, focus on slavery, which was, if not the worst uh, institution from a libertarian perspective in American history. It was certainly tied for the worst. Sure. And 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 it was so uh, it was so uh, pervasive and so it, it corrupted and twisted the you know the the political system of the of of the South and 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 the and the federal government as well uh, up until the war and and it was. It was such a. It was more than like an exception to the liberty of the founding. There were a lot of exceptions to America's supposed libertarian origins, but this was such a fatal flaw that I think it's absurd, for example, to consider the overall the U.S. a freer country then than it than it is now. Oh sure, it, yeah, without and, a doubt. And I think some people kind of slip into that. Um, and they, 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 they relegate slavery to, uh, to a, being an asterisk. Oh, know? sure. Ameri yeah. America was libertarian except for the worst possible violation of liberty <laughs> that was going on. It's Jeez. like yeah. Stalin was pretty libertarian except for the gulags and the you know, collectivization of agriculture and the aggressive wars, too. Right. Well, you know, I'm, I'm completely for I mean, no, he wasn't, but... You, I think you know. Right, right. Well, I mean, I, I do think that we should finally elevate Joseph Stalin to the, um, you know, to his place in the libertarian pantheon that he's always deserved. But hey, Stalin was pretty critical of Hitler, at least after Hitler invaded. Sure. It's, yeah. It's, I, I don't. I don't he doubt was it. fighting. He was fighting back. He just wanted free trade. <laughs> Have a good one. <laughs>